Hello, welcome to Oxford Heirlooms. This is going to be the final video for project number 41 of Funeral Paul. As you can see, I've already got the ruffles um, sewn on. Um, I've zigzagged the raw seams on all four panels and I have zigzagged the entredeau um, to the panel. Okay, so now we need to miter this corner. Now let me go back to the last corner because I've already got three of the four corners done. And as you can see, this turns out real nice. Um, what I did was you can see I've drawn a blue line. Can you see that blue? Well, I don't know if you can see that blue line, but I drew a blue line that I could sew against. Um, and then I zigzagged about a quarter of an inch away from the line that I sewed on. And I trimmed the fabric close to the zigzag. And right now I have it finger folded to one side. Um, but I will go and press that in a little bit. So let me show you how I did this on this remaining corner. Okay, so um, I'm going to do similar to what I did um, with the border piece. I'm going to fold it at a diagonal from the corner. I'm gonna match up my borders and ribbon. Let me see what my border and ribbon is. Line up my borders and ribbon, fold it where I, I sewed before. Then I'm going to bring my two panels out and lay them on top of each other so that they match up along the bottom and fold together up at the top. Okay, now I can't use my tiny drafting triangle for this, but I have a larger drafting triangle. This one is a 12 inch drafting triangle, but I'm going to lay it along the bottom of the lays. It's a little bit hard to do that down here at this end because it's gathered, but I'm going to line up with my diagonal line in my lays, and then using my blue fabric marking pen, I'm going to draw a line that I will sew along. Just draw it right onto the lace also. Okay, now using a few silk pins, I'm going to pin this into position so that it doesn't move as I'm sewing it. Let me see if I can bring this up where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to pin it down here near the end of the lace. Pin it at the junction of the lace and the batiste. And then put two more pins in just for good measure. Okay, now like I did with the border, I'm going to begin sewing up here at this top corner. Let's see, I've got my sewing machine set back to a straight stitch. So let me come over here where I can come to the top of the blue line, right where that corner matches up. Let me get my thread underneath the presser foot. And then I'm gonna go backward and forward a couple of stitches just to tack the top into place. And then like I did on the border, I'm gonna follow my blue line down the diagonal. Take my pins at it as I come to them. down to the end of the lace and when we get to the end of the lace I'm going to go forward and backward a couple of st stitches just to hold it into place the 
clip my threads. Okay, now I'm gonna reset my sewing machine to a wide zigzag and a fairly small stitch length. And then I'm going to stitch one quarter inch away from the seam that I just sewed. Okay, now as I get to the lace, I'm gonna migrate the zigzag close to my blue line that I sewed on. And then when I get down to the end, I'll go back and forward a little bit again. There we go. Okay, let me clip my threads again. Okay, now using my fabric cutting scissors, I'm gonna cut right next to the zigzag line without cutting the zigzag. and just cut off the extra mitered corner that we no longer need. Okay, so when we open that up, we have a beautiful mitered corner. Now once again, let me finger fold this towards one direction, and then I'll take this to the ironing board when I'm finished. Let me finger fold that in one direction. And then I'll go to the ironing board and press that real well. But this finishes up project number 41, um, a funeral pall. I do still need to um, use my spray bottle of distilled water. Um, I need to lay it out on my kitchen island and inspect for all of these blue lines that I have left um, on the gar, on the, well, not garment, um, and on the project that are still showing. But let me see if I can zoom out just a little bit. I think I've zoomed out just about as far as I can. But this has just turned out to be just outstanding. The, the hand embroidery on the center panel, I've got the floral motifs at all four corners and then a little circular motif in the center. Um, the reason I didn't put any religious symbols on here is that the couple that I'm making it for are a mixed marriage um, of Jewish and Episcopalian and they chose to not have any religious symbols on it at all. But you can see as I work my way down towards the ruffle this project has just turned out, I mean, it, it's just really, I'm, I'm, I'm just so super, super pleased with the way it turned out. But um, I'll take a larger picture um, of it out on my kitchen island um, and post it at the end of this video. But thank you.